Welcome back to City Line. I know I wasn't the face you were expecting. I'm Cynthia Mulligan, a friend and colleague of Tracy's for 20 plus years when we worked in the newsroom together. Well, today we are flipping the script and honoring this remarkable woman because tonight she's getting a huge, special, well deserved honor by the Academy of Canadian Cinema and Television. <laughs> Let me first now tell you a bit about our Tracy Moore. Look at that, look right at <laughs> yeah! Today, we are talking about race. Like you said, it is life and death at this point. The stakes are too high. This is when we say representation matters, everyone. It matters, Absolutely. you know? So you've got to see yourself in order to feel like you belong. <laughs> She is a truth teller. Resilience and resistance, right? A conversation starter. I'm taking a risk here, a silence breaker. We shouldn't have no. to have such no. a high pain tolerance. That's not no. okay. A game changer. We are getting City Line Real, and it starts with this face. Eyelashes gone. A change maker. I just want to point out that a conversation like this, spanning networks, has rarely been done before in Canada, and certainly not with a panel of black women. Instead of waiting for progress, Tracy, you are the progress. Mm, so good. You started at City Line, you were trailblazing. And what that means is you needed to be very careful. And I've been there too about how you react. A daughter of Jamaican immigrants who grew up not seeing anyone who looked like her on TV. A girl who became a journalist, thriving in rooms where you were the only. A woman who went on to become the host of the longest running lifestyle show in Canada. Wow, that's a welcome. I'm Tracy Moore. Welcome to City Line today. You create space for diverse talent. You amplify stories that aren't heard. You push the industry in places it has not wanted to go. We're You're wearing a towel. Uh -huh. People get really, really upset about you liking your body when you have a big body. Mm -hmm. Instead, using your voice to call out systemic racism and discrimination for the women who came before you. <laughs> How do you balance this sort of intense veneration for who you are and what you stand for with just getting out of bed every morning and living your life? <laughs> well, keeping it fun helps. You have won the City Line Scholarship. <laughs> and for the ones who will come after you. Well, what's really going on here is a whole lot of fake. This is the real me, and I love her! Yes! Moments not without risk, but you took them because it was the right thing to do. I don't know if I belong here or if I was even invited, and I don't care. Yep, I'm here right? anyway. I'm here, I'm anyway. here anyway. Tracy, you lead with your heart. You are real about your struggles, and each day, we are so grateful to bask in your smile, your joy, your authenticity. Do I still have it? <gasps> Should I try? <laughs> for me to be sitting here with you. I mean, people won't know this because a lot of our relationship has been off camera, but mm -hmm. this is the woman that organized my baby shower at City TV. This is the woman that got all the girls together and got me a bugaboo stroller, like the best <laughs> stroller in 2008 when I had my first baby. Had the shower at her house, had her, her girls came to my wedding. Like, we go way back and having you here as such an icon, uh, reporter that is respected in the field uh, so much and have you say these words about me it means the world sin thank you I love you I but love you too do you know what she just did she just turned the tables and was honoring me and <laughs> I'm the one here to honor her I'm in your chair by the way so I know, I'm leading this I conversation for a change <laughs> okay what do no. I do over here <laughs> Well, I want to talk about you. I mean, you're always the one doing the amazing interviews, but we want to know more about you. And this is such a meaningful award on so many levels, Tracy. But let's start with you. What does this award mean to you? 
I want to not care about all the external validation. I want to be above it, but I'm not. <laughs> when I found out about this one, it was particular, like, it meant so much to me. Um, I almost hate to admit how much it meant to me, but it, I think it's because it's about the work that I value the most. And it's the work that has actually never usually been on camera. It's always mm -hmm. been behind the scenes. It's been happening for a long time. I didn't just start posting about racial discrimination in 2020, and I do a lot more than post things on Instagram. Yes. There is work that happens behind the scenes that no one ever really gets to see or hear about. And so it's it's it means the world to me. Honestly, it's maybe the, the best one yet. Wonderful. Let's talk about the work that you have been doing behind the scenes for a very long time. Yeah, I would like go back to high school because in mm -hmm. high school already I noticed the gap in education and I taught myself black history. I'm happy the kids are getting a little bit more black history now, but I took out books about Zora Neale Hurston and W.B. Du Bois. I found out about Marcus Garvey. I found out about colonialism. I, I used to ask people all the time, my parents are big news readers, like, why, why are blacks struggling so much globally? Why are women having to fight so hard globally? And those are sort of the, the major touch points in my identity. I'm a black woman. And so I moved through the world as a black woman. And I wasn't finding these answers very readily. And I had beautiful teachers, particularly Miss Holding, my high school English teacher, who allowed me to use all of my independent study units all throughout high school focused on black history. And she gave me that space to present and to learn about these topics. And once I learned about these topics, I knew that we had all had a responsibility to try and change things in our own little world, in our own little spaces. And that's what I've been doing. It's not without pain. It's not without sacrifice. It's not without hardship, though. You've put yourself on the line many times. I've watched mm -hmm. you. I've, I've, through COVID in particular, mm -hmm. I, I, we didn't see each other in person. But I just wanted to give you this massive hug because I could see the pain behind your words. Let's talk about that for a minute because this has not been easy to be the person standing up and calling out injustice and calling out systemic racism. It's a very vulnerable place to be and there was a lot of excitement in 2020 because all of a sudden People weren't seeing me talking about the struggles of a black woman as bias. That's what I used to get called out for. How dare you bring your bias? You are a television personality. My bias? This is my identity. I'm not allowed to talk about black people being shot dead by police? Like, that's, that's outside of my... That's outside of the realm of things I can care about? So for me, there was excitement um, in 2020 that people were willing to sit back and, and listen for a bit. But there was also panic and urgency because I knew the door was going to close imminently. Yes. I, I felt like we had five minutes. So how are we going to get substantive change? Like, let's get some changes in the little amount of time that we get. And I worked myself too hard and I put myself out there too much. Um, whether it was, you know, doing work behind the scenes here at Rogers for corporate, um, doing things for City Line, you know, having live discussions and a series on race. Um, whether it was working online, taking the hate that came with that, getting embroiled in, in all sorts of people calling me a race baiter. Um, and I, you know, it kind of stopped me in my tracks. At some point I came into the studio and I, I just, I had no breath. So I had to take a step back, get a therapist, figure out how I can basically do this fight but in a more sustainable way. I think what people need to realize is that when anyone from a marginalized community is speaking about their experiences, it's not a debate and it's never innocuous. It is always very deeply personal. So if I'm here talking about my hair, if I'm here talking about being stopped at the border with my parents and having our car torn up, it hurts me to talk about it because I'm reliving the trauma. And so that's what I was doing day in, day out. And it is trauma. It's trauma. It's trauma. I haven't even really pro properly unpacked it or processed it because it's ongoing, but I've learned um, some sort of barriers to keep myself protected so that I don't work to the point where I can't work anymore. And all the while, you have two children you're protecting. Oh, the babies. The babies. They saw a lot going, go down in 2020, and in their minds, I think they think, could you be less invested in change, please? <laughs> <laughs> they saw me had a few like breakdowns and what have you and the, the kids are very they're very thoughtful kids they're very invested in their parents 
So that was tough for them too. Yeah. Yeah. And yet you come here every day mm -hmm. full of joy. Yeah. Well, they make it easy. The audience yeah. makes it easy. <laughs> it's nice to have people here that are like happy. And um, every single person behind every single camera and in my ear and in the control room, like these, the, they, everyone counts. The vibe in this room is very much what, how, what we want it to be. Mm -hmm. And it's friendly and it's loving. I feel like people have my back here. I feel supported. And that goes a long way. And I feel like even my bosses, like my S Sandy Chronopolis, Laura Ryder, they're the ones that are like, oh, it's too much? Do you need to take a break? Do you need to slow down? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you feel safe? How do we make you feel safe? How do, we re how do we support you? And you need all that to be able to show up as yourself at work, and I have that. Wonderful. So I feel very lucky. Still lots of change to make. Oh, gosh, Sin, we're not even close. You mm -hmm. know this. You work, you work on the political beat. Not even close. But at least the conversation is on the table. So at least the dialogue is happening. Do you feel like the needle has been pushed in the right direction at least? There's a little bit of a needle push. There's a okay. lot of performance happening, but there's a little bit of a needle push in the sense that we can now talk about privilege. And I mean, maybe in a nuanced way, I'm a marginalized person with privilege. And we can talk about that. We can talk about, you know, how to use that. And we never used to be able to talk about that at all. So there's some movement. But you, my friend, are ferocious. You invented the word. You are a spirit lifter. You are a gift giver. giver. And I love you. And I, I admire you. you. doing this. Okay. Thank you.